Hi there, David here from Critical Trading. One problem that many traders who want to trade the market using just the market structure face is where exactly to enter the market. If the market is trending, like on this chart here, we can see that it creates price swings as indicated on the chart in red. When focusing on trading just the market structure itself, meaning that you don't use any indicators to describe the market and to time your trades, it becomes quite tricky to pick a precise area in which you want to open your trades. On this particular chart, if you want to go long, i.e. to buy at this price swing, you can open your trade here or a bit later at this point or you might want to get a better price and have a limit order here and miss the profitable trade. The question is, how do you know exactly when and where to open your trades when trading the market structure? In one of my recent videos, I shared a simple discretionary trading framework to trade the market structure where I focused on manual trading. And so the strategy I shared then was a discretionary framework. Link in the description if you haven't seen it yet. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to further develop the concept of trading the market structure, but this time I'm going to do it slightly differently. I'm going to share a fully systematic trading approach instead. One that trades the market structure and so it doesn't use any moving averages or anything like that. It can be fully automated in the form of an algorithm and it uses a very simple but very effective method of entries based on markets, current volatility and current structure. So let's start. The core of this strategy is the highest high over a certain number of price bars. This is similar to the discretionary approach I shared in my last market structure video. This particular example is based on daily time frame and works with highest high over three months. This level is plotted on the chart in the form of a turquoise line. The reason we use the highest high is to describe the market structure. We want to see that the market has enough strength or momentum to go up and that keeps breaking its previous highs as indicated on the screen. If, on the other hand, the market is not able to break through its previous three month price high for a certain period of time, we don't want to enter a market like this. I'll get back to that later in the video. Once we know that the market is strong enough to be breaking its previous highs, we need to understand the current volatility of the market. For that, I like to use indicator called ATR, which is very popular, you must have heard of it. It's average true range. This is a very useful tool that I use in my systematic strategies, probably the most useful indicator out there. Now, if you don't know what ATR is, to put simply, ATR measures the volatility of the market by looking at the size or the range of its candlesticks. If I zoom in a little bit, we can see that the candlesticks in this area here are on average much smaller than this volatile bearish candle, for instance. Market has gone more volatile at this candle when compared to the previous candlesticks. This is a very important piece of information. You need to take this current market volatility into the account and adjust your trading plan accordingly, especially when trading manually. When it comes to systematic trading strategies like this one, ATR does the job very well. We can see how ATR keeps up with the volatility and increases in the highlighted area of the screen. Now, why do we need to measure the market's volatility? Well, there are two reasons for that. Firstly, we want to time our trade entries using the current market's volatility. And secondly, we want to use it to place our stop loss as well. Let's look at the entry part first. I have now plotted the yellow line on the chart which represents the price at which we want to buy if the market trades below it. However, very importantly, we only want to buy at this price if the market keeps breaking its three month price high, which is the turquoise line. So in this situation here, we can see that the market broke about this level at this point. Because the three month price high was broken, our buy price is getting plotted on the chart in the form of a yellow line. If the market makes a pullback after it made a new high, and it does so within a certain time, the strategy buys. This strategy therefore trades pullbacks in the direction of the overall market structure. I employ a very similar approach in my manual discretionary trading that's based on supply and demand. I use a tool called Volume Profile and I analyze volume as well as the price action to determine what the structure of the market is. Because it's a discretionary approach, the decision-making process of opening and exiting a trade is rather advanced. I'm reopening my advanced discretionary course in February 2021 for the last time. You can sign up on my website to get on my wait list if you like. Check the link on the screen or in the description of the video for more details. So, so how exactly do we calculate the exact price at which we want to buy? As you may presume, we'll be using ATR to do so. The calculation itself is rather simple. When the market breaks about its previous three month price high, like it did on this candle that I've just selected, we take the candle's low price, 
which in this case is 50.44. We then look at our ATR indicator. I'm using ATR with period of 20 bars and on top of this I'm multiplying its value by 2. In this case the resulting value arrives at 1.39. To then get my buy price I take the low of the candle at which the new breakout took place, which is 50.44, and then subtract the ATR variable of 1.39. The result arrives at 49.05, which is our buy level plotted in the form of a yellow line on the chart. This level is two times the ATR of 20 bars in distance from the low of the bar at which the market broke the high. By using the ATR in this calculation, what we're doing, we're adjusting to the current volatility of the market, which is very important. Such approach is, in my experience, much more robust than entering at fixed percentage below the current price or fixed number of ticks or pips. The latter doesn't really take the current volatility into the account. Now, as we can see, market go back to our buy level at this particular candle, generating a buy setup at its close. I coded this strategy in a way that it actually opens its trades at the open of the following candle, which would be uh, this price here. The reason I did this is that I tested this strategy on daily data and in that case it's uh, much easier in practice to open the trades at open of the following day as you don't have to be watching the markets real time at their close. However, this approach can obviously be applied to intraday timeframes in which case the trades can be open and close. So now that we have the buy levels and buy prices shown on the chart, let's go back to one very important element of this strategy and that is how long the buy levels should be valid for. We can see that the market made a breakout of the three month high here, then it reversed straight away and didn't manage to reach this level and break it again. What this means is that the market may have exhausted its momentum after breaking its three month high and is now going sideways. As this strategy aims to trade markets that have shown strong momentum, we want to exclude those that do not show strong momentum. And we do this by limiting the validity of our buy levels. In this strategy, I used 10 bars following the breakout as the maximum time that the buy level is valid for. So this is the point at which the market broke its three month high. Our buy level is calculated. Then, as you can see, the buy level line ends at this point. As the market didn't manage to make a new breakout, our buy level is invalidated and we do not look for entries anymore. If the market got back to this level after more than 10 bars, then no valid signal would be generated. If, on the other hand, market would have made a new high, then our level gets recalculated and the 10 bar rule gets reset again. And finally, this is how the setups look alongside with the exits on the chart. For the purposes of this video, I didn't test the exits as such. Instead, I opted for a very simple exit of closing the trade when the current candlestick's closing price is higher than closing prices of two previous candlesticks. Such exit setup took place on the highlighted bullish candle. Last rule of this strategy we're going to look at is of course the stop loss. If you made it to this point of the video, you will likely presume that a stop loss will be based on the current market's volatility as well. Again, this makes a lot of sense as we want to adjust our approach to what's actually taking place in the market. If the market gets too volatile for whatever reason, we need to ensure that the size of our stop loss gets flexed accordingly. The red line on the chart is the level of the stop loss. I calculated it by taking the value of two times the ATR of past 20 bars at the point at which the market broke below our buy level, the yellow line. That took place at this particular bearish candle. The value of the ATR variable was 1.51 at this point. This value is then our stop loss size adjusted to the current volatility. This particular trade was open in the following day at open at the price of 49.11. The final stop loss level for this trade is therefore 49.11 minus 1.51, which arrives at 47.60. This concludes today's video. Thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned for next week when I release the results and equity curve of this strategy and give you some tips on how to use it as well. This is David, Critical Trading, signing out.